Hello and welcome to the Ming Home. You know, last weekend I shared that uh, we were going to be hosting service online at the Ming House. And so welcome into the Ming Home. You got to worship with my kids in the living room. My wife invited you in. We've kind of updated you on all the things that are coming. And one of the things I'm excited about is to sit at the table. We're in the series called Table Talk. And um, you get to sit at the table with me this weekend. And in fact, I've asked our church family to take pictures of their family having dinner. And when they post it, tag us at hashtag HV Table Talk. I want to say that again because I want to invite you to do it this week again. When you take a picture of your family at the table eating um, and you post it, tag us at hashtag HV Table Talk. In fact, we have a couple families that sent pictures in this week. And the first one is the McCarty family. And I don't know if this is a, a picture of dinner um, at Thanksgiving, but it looks like there's mashed potatoes and gravy. And I don't know about you, but that's sounding awfully good to me right now, a little Thanksgiving meal. But uh, thank you for sending that picture in, the McCarty family. And then we have the Harville family. Take a look at this. Now, I'm not sure if they're um, on a little getaway together or if they have a house right by the beach, but it looks beautiful where they are. I am a little bit puzzled by the mask. I don't know how they're going to get the food in. <laughs> But uh, no, thank you, uh, Harville family, for sending that wonderful picture. I hope you're having a wonderful time together. And you know what? I, I just want to welcome you to our table. My wife decorated the table today. I've got some wonderful food here. In fact, I got my napkin. I'm a messy eater, so I probably need to do what you're not supposed to do, which is to uh, take it and you know shove it down here. No, I'm not going to do that, really. I am a little bit messy when I eat, but uh, I have some wonderful things here at the table. I got some tri-tip. I've got some mashed potatoes, I got rolls, and uh, we're going to just spend some time, have a little table talk. In fact, some of you that weren't with us last week, I, I shared with you in the Ming house, when we're sitting around the table, one of the things we do is someone will go like this. They'll knock on the table and they say, topic on the table. And we'll go around and have to answer a question. Maybe the question is like, when this stay-at-home order is over, what is the first thing you want to go do? Well, I can tell you one thing I want to do is I want to go play golf and everyone will go around the table. And then we usually end our meal with what we call highs and lows. And that is where you tell your high for the day, the best thing that happened, and your low for the day, the thing that was the, the bummer of the day. Well, you know, we've taken some scriptures in the Bible, and there are passages where there are tables in scripture. And last week, we learned a passage of scripture that had a table, and I want to read it in just a second. But before I do that, can I do something? We are so glad you're with us. In fact, if you're new, my name is Jared Mang. I'm the lead pastor here at Higher Vision Church, and we're excited to have you with us online. We have people joining us literally around the world in places all over the Santa Clarita Valley, like Canyon Country, out in Santa Paula, down in Blythe. We have people in places in Northern California, like Fresno and Modesto. We have other states joining us, like Oregon and Washington, Alabama. We have other nations joining us. Can we do this today? I know it's a little strange and different, but would you put your hands together and welcome each other to church? Isn't that awesome? High five to you that you joined us for church. And we're going to dive into a passage of scripture. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to read the passage we read last week, Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. We're going to read all six verses together. And you can see those verses on the bottom of the screen and read along with me. So let's read this together, Psalm 23, verse 1. Let's read. You ready? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I want to read that part again. Would you just say that with me? Because this is the part of this passage that talks about the table. Say this with me. You ready? You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love this psalm. It's one of the most popular scriptures of the Bible. And I want to do something today. As we dive into this passage, I want you to close your eyes right now and I want to pray a prayer over you. Can you do it in every home, whether you're in the bed or you're on the couch, you're sitting at the table? Close your eyes, let's pray. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this moment. And we ask that you would anoint everything that I share. 
But not only anoint the words that are spoken, anoint our ears, our eyes, and our hearts to hear and receive the truth. And we know this truth is gonna bless us and give us freedom. Because those who know the truth, the Bible says they will be free. So Lord, we thank you for freedom. We thank you for your anointing. And I pray today that you would touch every person on the other side of that screen right now. Touch them with your presence and your grace in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody say amen, amen. Well, I wanted today just do a quick little review for those of you that are joining us. Last week, we learned about the topic on the table. As you read through this psalm at the table that God had prepared, the first topic on the table was talk about the shepherd. Last week, we learned that God is our shepherd. We learned three things. We learned that he provides, our shepherd provides. We learned that our shepherd um, restores, and we learned that our shepherd protects. And I want to encourage you, if you will, to go to the website, and you can actually watch the sermon from last week. Go to YouTube. You can see it and be encouraged. But today, I want to give you the second topic on the table. When you read this passage, that topic is this. We, we need to, ready, talk about the enemy. Now, I know that's counterintuitive for some of you. You're like, wait a minute. We talked about the shepherd. That seems good. But why talk about the enemy? Well, I want to read to you the scripture that we read a moment ago. It's found in Psalm 23, verse 5, which says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. One of the things that we need to talk about when we're at the table, and I want to encourage you this week to sit down and talk to your kids about this sermon. Talk to your kids about God as your shepherd. But I also want you to talk about the enemy because here's what you need to know. Maybe, you don't, you, maybe you're joining us and this is all new for you. You've never really gone to church and we're excited that you're with us, but you need to know something, that there is an enemy, an enemy of your soul. In fact, the Bible says he wants to st- steal, he wants to kill, and he wants to destroy your future and your eternity. He doesn't want you to spend eternity in heaven with God, and he doesn't want you to live the full life that God has destined for you. Ephesians tells us that we're not wrestling or fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And here's what you need to know. The devil, the enemy, wants access to you. He wants access to your home. He wants access to your children. He wants access to your finances. He wants access to your life. Remember the story in the Bible, if you haven't heard of it, it's, it's a story about how that, that there was a man by the name of Job and he was blessed and the Bible says that the enemy came, Satan came to God and said, I wanna have access to him but I can't get to him because you've put a hedge around him. He said, I want access to Job and the enemy wants access to you. And you know, as we're sitting at the table and we're talking about table talk, God said he prepared a table in the presence of of our enemies and you know today um, as I was thinking about it it reminded me of a story now I'm just going to get a little real and raw in this story as pastor of a church that has thousands of people um, it's a blessing to go out into the community whether it's the grocery store or when things are normal to a restaurant and to see people that we know from the church and to have a quick conversation and to say hi or whatever sometimes people want to pull me aside and ask for prayer which I love to do. But it just so happened that this particular situation, my wife and I had not been on a date night in forever. Come on, any people know what I'm talking about? Unless you've been doing it at home, <laughs> you might not have been on a date. Well, David, I hadn't been on a date. And so we decided to have date night and we went to a restaurant. And when we got there, we sat down and we were so excited to be able to have a little time together. No kids, no distractions. And as we're sitting there about to start this meal, someone from the church walks in. Now, I'll be honest with you, just being real, my heart sunk a little bit (laughs) because I'm like, no, this is the the one time my wife and I, hopefully, maybe they won't notice us or they'll just kind of wave and walk by. But instead, when they saw us, they're like, oh, Pastor Jared, Pastor Devette, and they walked over to the table. Now, totally fine, definitely want to say hi, excited to see them, but I want to enjoy the evening with my wife. So inside, I'm hoping that they'll kind of say, hey, it's good to see you, have a great night, and go on. But instead... They started to talk and then the danger, we we moved into the danger zone because here's what they did. They walked closer to the table and they put their hand on one of the chairs. How many know when that happens, you're like, whoa, hold on, (laughs) because I'm nervous. This is date night. And and how many know if they sit down, it's over, right? It's going to be 30 minutes. Your meal's going to be cold. You're not going to be able to enjoy the time together. Not, you know, maybe it's wrong of me, but I was a little selfish at that moment because I wanted some time with my wife. Can I tell you, thankfully, 
they said a couple things. They realized we were on a date. They took their hand off the chair. I sighed a little bit of a relief. And then uh, they said, hey, have a good night. And they walked on. Can I stop and say, I told you that story because that's kind of an example of, of this idea that the devil is looking for an opening to get down and sit at your table. The devil wants access to your home, to your life, and the next thing you know, if you're not careful, you'll make room for the enemy, and he'll be sitting at your table, and he'll be eating your food, and he'll be taking from you, robbing, stealing, and destroying the blessings and promises God has for you. So today what I want to do is, and I want to say, by making the enemy the topic of the table, I'm not in any way suggesting that we exalt the enemy or that we walk in fear or we, we grandiose him or make him big and large, but we need to be aware of what the enemy is trying to do. And so, in fact, the scripture, can I read a scripture to you? It's found in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, which says, stay alert and watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. And what does it say? Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. We need to be aware of this enemy who's trying to slip in and sit down at the table of your life to rob and steal from you. So here's the question. How do we know if the enemy is at our table? And I want to give you a few reasons and a few lies of the enemy that will let you know that the enemy might be sitting at your table. Are you ready? Because today I believe that you and I can enjoy the blessings of God even when the enemy's coming at us because the Bible says God has prepared a table in the presence of our enemies. So, is the enemy at your table? Well, here's how you can know. Maybe he's whispered in your ear this first principle. Write this down if you're taking notes and that is, he's gonna tell you this. There's something better at another table. There's something better in another table. Now, some of you are saying, well, what do you mean by that? Well, let me, let me kind of explain it this way. First of all, my kids and my wife, Devette, they sometimes get frustrated at me when we go out to eat. And let me tell you why. In fact, even when I go out to eat, sometimes people will give me funny looks. And here's why. Because when we're being seated at the, the, the restaurant table, as we're walking through the restaurant, I'll stop and I'll stare at people's plates and their food. And when I do that, I don't realize that I've stopped and they'll kind of look up at me like, who are you? Quit looking at my food. And the reason I'm doing it is because I want to see what they're eating because on the menu, if there's no pictures, I, I don't know whether that looks good or not. So I'll, I'll literally stop and look at people's food and my kids are like, come on, dad. And they're like so embarrassed of me because I'm staring at everybody's food. And I got to tell you, when I stare at their food, usually I'll see something that I go, ooh, that looks good. I think I might order that. And you know what? That's what the enemy tries to do with you and I. God prepares a table, and the table is a table that's blessed. It's a table that has things like bread. I've got some awesome bread here. This is amazing bread. We had, it, had uh, actually, we ate a little bit earlier. And um, I gotta tell you, with the garlic and the butter, man, it's delicious. Now, last week I realized I was eating and I was chomping through my microphone, so I'm trying not to do that right now. But, What's interesting is God has prepared a, a, a table for you, a table of blessing. But what the enemy does is he says, hey, you know what? Th this isn't good. You need something else. There's something better at the other table. You know, what's interesting is um, I've had kids that have come to the table, kids in our home, and they'll go, oh, that is, I don't want that. And the more you look at something else, the more, if you're not careful, you'll be dissatisfied with what you have. Can I tell you, there are people right now that are falling prey to that. Maybe it's the, the lie of the enemy that, you know, your car isn't as nice as your neighbor who just got a new one. And that car you've had that's not that old that you've been comfortable with and happy with, but now suddenly you see that the Joneses have something nicer. And the next thing you know is, well, wow, wow that's awesome. It's got a, a different feature than my car has. And it's got more controls for my seat. And man, I like the way you can talk to the navigational system. And the next thing you know, you're not satisfied with what you have. And the devil will start to get you to believe that there's something better at the other table. Maybe you're in a marriage and you're, you're, you're frustrated. Maybe you're not communicating the way you used to. And suddenly the next thing you know is you're starting to look at someone else's spouse or husband or wife and you're starting to say, you know what, man, there's so much. Man, I don't like where I am at. And, and the enemy, what he does is he tries to rob us of our contentment. Do you know the Bible tells us in Exodus not to covet 
something from someone else. If it's your neighbor's wife or, or husband or possessions or servants, which we don't have servants today, but their possessions, it says don't look at them. You see, the grass is always greener on the other side. That's what the devil tells us. But can I tell you, that's not true because you know the real statement is this, is the grass is always greener where you water it. And I want to read a scripture to you. It says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, it says, Godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing in, in with us when we came into this world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave. So if we have food, enough food and clothing, let us be content. You know what's interesting is it's easy for the enemy to rob us of our contentment. And if the devil is telling you, did you know what Paul said? Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But you know what most people don't know is they don't know that when he said that, he was referring to contentment. He said, I've had a lot or I've had a little and I've learned to be content in all things. And then he said, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can I tell you something? I wanna encourage you to get your eyes back on your table. Start looking at the food on your plate. Start looking at the blessings and the promises that God has given you, the health that he's given you, the home that he's given you, the friendships that he's given you, the church that he's given you, the, the job that he's given you. Don't let the devil rob you. God has blessed you at the table. He'll tell you there's something better at another table. That's how you know the enemy's at your table. Can I tell you another way that you can tell if the enemy is taking a seat at your table? And that's this, he'll tell you this. Um, you're not gonna make it. He'll tell you you're not gonna make it. You're never gonna get back to where you were after this pandemic financially because things aren't gonna be the same. Your dreams will not survive this pandemic. You're never gonna be able to buy that new house or you're, you're never gonna be able to adopt a child because you're not gonna be able to afford another child. The enemy would slip at your table, sit down and start whispering into your mind and say you're not gonna make it. It's interesting, this week I was in a time of devotion and the Lord showed me something I'd never seen before. Many of you have heard Jesus tell the story about prayer. He told his disciples, he said, when you pray, you need to be like a widow who had an unjust judge who wouldn't give her justice. And he said this, he said, she kept going back to him and eventually he gave her justice, not because he wanted to, but because he was tired of her persistence and of her asking him. And he went on to say, he said, um, don't give up in prayer. Be persistent like this widow. And then it's interesting because I'd never noticed this before. At the end of the statement where he talks about prayer and about being persistent, he then makes this statement. He says this. He says, um, who will find faith on the earth? And as I was contemplating and meditating on that, I realized that what Jesus was doing is he was giving us a unique perspective or definition of the word faith. Because here's basically what he was saying. He was saying real faith is, per is persistent. It doesn't give up. It doesn't quit. This widow, she had faith because she didn't give up. And the point I'm making to you is simply this. The Bible says faith without works is dead. And what the devil wants to do is he wants to sit down at your table and start to get you to believe that you're not gonna make it because if you don't believe you're gonna make it, then you'll quit praying. If you don't believe you're not gonna make it, then you'll quit sowing and giving into God's kingdom. If you don't believe that you're gonna make it, then you'll, you'll quit uh, bettering yourself by taking those classes. You see, the devil wants to get you to quit. Why? There's a scripture that tells us. It's found in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, which says this. So let's not get tired of doing what is good because just at the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Here's the message. The table talk today is don't give up. Don't let the devil convince you that you're not gonna make it. I'm telling you, we're gonna make it through this pandemic. We're gonna make it through this difficult economy. We're gonna make it through this sickness. Why? Because we have a good shepherd who is with us and he has prepared the table for us even in the presence of COVID-19, even in the presence of a recession, even in the presence of difficulty. Our God has not left us. We are not alone you're gonna make it. Come on, somebody say amen. I, I just feel it. I feel that amen connecting, that high five connecting with me from that screen. See, the devil wants to sit down in your table and tell you, you need to look at the other table because it's better over there and you're not gonna make it. Here's the third lie of the enemy. You know that the enemy is at your table when he says this. You ready? Write it down. You're not good enough. 
you're not good enough. I can't tell you how many people have believed the eye, the lie of the devil, the lie of the enemy, that they're not good enough. They don't believe that they're pretty enough. They don't believe that they're strong enough. They don't believe that they're smart enough. They don't believe that they're spiritual enough. And I wanna tell you that the enemy will come and he'll start to tell you and make you feel horrible about yourself, make you feel like that you'll never measure up, that the others are better than you. But can I tell you the way we answer the lie of the enemy is to take a look back at the table. The table is the solution. The table is the answer to the lie of the enemy. We know that the scripture says when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Here's what you need to know. Just look at the table. Look at the blessings of God in your life and it'll remind you. Look at the table. It'll remind you that you're good enough. You say, how does that happen, Pastor Jared? Well, the Bible says that he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemy. You see, the reason that this table reminds us that we're good, we're good enough is because of who invited us to the table. Let me explain it this way. When we first started Higher Vision Church many, many years ago, one of the families that joined the church knew that our anniversary was coming up. And so they called us and they said, hey, pastor, um, you and your wife, we want to bless you for your anniversary. And so they made a, a reservation at this restaurant and they said, this is a very expensive place. You need to dress nice and we want you to go. There's a reservation for you. And so we drove across town to this French cuisine restaurant, very expensive place. We walked in, it was unbelievable. There was very few tables. Um, you had, I mean, they were taking care, of you, taking care of you hand and foot, waiting on you. We were dressed nice, we sat down and we began to look at the spread, the beauty of the place, began to eat the food and realize, man, this was an expensive reservation. Can I stop and tell you the reason we need to look at the table is because this table that we sit at, the table of faith, the table of salvation that God has prepared in the presence of our enemies was the most costly reservation of all time because it cost the life of Jesus Christ, the good shepherd. He came to this world and he died on the cross. There's no greater love, right? There's no greater cost than to lay down your life for someone else. It was the most precious, the most costly reservation of history when God created an invitation for you to come to the table. The price tag was so great. In other words, the reservation means this. It means that you're special. You're good enough. You're so good that God gave the best that he had. He opened up and he brought out the best bottle of wine. And he, he bought the best bread, the body of Christ, his son, the blood of Jesus. That was the reservation. That was the cost. That was the price for you to sit at the table of the kingdom. You're good enough because God loved you so much that he died on a cross for you. Don't believe the lies of the enemy when he jumps into your mind and whispers into your ear and tries to sit at your table and say you're not good enough. You are good enough. You're so valuable that God paid the greatest price for you. Welcome to the table that God has prepared in the presence of his enemies. Man, I sense the Lord here. I sense that he's there with you right now. Some of you need to hear me. I'm, I'm going off script for a minute. I'm going off my notes for a minute to tell you how valuable you are. Don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let your you know, uh, stay-at-home order and your quarantine make you feel so discouraged and so down that you're not seeing things correctly anymore. God loves you. He hasn't forgotten you. He's prepared a table for you. He's paid the greatest price for you. You are good enough. You are beautiful in his eyes. And he loves you. I wanna share with you now the last way you can know if the enemy has snuck down and sat at your table. It's a phrase, a lie that he's gonna tell you and here's the lie, write it down. Everyone is against me. If you think everyone is against you, it could be an indication that the enemy is whispering lies into your ears. You know, it's funny, when people begin to think that everyone is against them um, and they buy into that lie, the next thing you know is they start seeing things that may not be real. They walk into a room and they're like, ah, oh, they didn't look up, something's wrong. I, I knew they didn't like me. Or they hear someone laugh and they're like, they're laughing at me, what did I do? And the enemy starts playing tricks in our minds and he uses that to destroy the blessings of the table where we are. And we end up developing a spirit of paranoia. 
and we start seeing things. And, and then the next thing that happens if we're not careful is we start to say, well, if they're gonna get me, then I'm gonna get them before they get me. So I'm gonna tell you, the devil's trying to do two things. The first thing he's trying to do, we've learned it already, and that is he's trying to get a seat at your table. The second thing he's trying to do is he's trying to get you to leave the table. Because you see, the table is where God's blessings are. God is calling you and I to take authority of our table and to, to make sure that we're at this table where we can receive the power and the promises and the blessings that God, God has for us. I want to tell you, don't give a foothold to the enemy. Don't give him a, a, a place to get at the table. Take authority over your table. Pray over your table. Pray over your family. Pray over your finances. Pray over your calling. Pray over your dreams. A, a few weeks ago on Good Friday, we had you take anointing oil and anoint your homes and declare the blood of Jesus and declare the promises of God. Take authority over that table. God has prepared it for you. Let me tell you why he doesn't want you to leave the table because the enemy wants you to leave the table. It's interesting because my wife she, she prepared this table with um, the family. One of the things I love about Devet is that everything we do as a family, it's important. It's an event. So when we have dinner, you don't just grab a, a plate and throw some food on it and sit down. And, no, we're going to make the table. Every, there's going to be placemats at the table. There's going to be salt and pepper at the table. There's going to be a pitcher of water at the table. There's going to be butter at the table. You see, the reality is that she makes sure that when you sit at the table, you don't have to get up to get something. You have everything you need. And what I love is that's the way God has done, that's what God has done for us. That's why if you read the Psalm, I, lo I love what it says in Psalm chapter 23, verse five and six, it says this. He said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And then he says this, you anoint my head with oil. You, he says, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, God wants you to stay at the table, not look at some other table and be drawn away. Not allow the enemy at your table, not leave and think, well, I need to go get this or if I go over there, I'll get what I need. No, he wants you to stay at the table because everything you need, goodness, mercy, anointing. What is the anointing? That's the power and the authority to fulfill our assignment in life. Everything you need, God has prepared for you at the table of the Lord. And he's done it in the presence of, his en of your enemies. Because you see, I believe God wants to do it in the presence of your enemies so that the enemy knows you don't have to get up and leave and go anywhere else. So that you'll know you don't have to go anywhere else. The enemy, he wants you to leave the table so that he can isolate you, so he can surround you, take you down, steal, destroy, rob the promises of God. But you see, the power is this. The blessing is not just what's on the table. The blessing is who is sitting at the table. Because God is at the table, you have everything you need. You have hope, you have freedom, you have peace. Everything you need is at the table. So stay at the table because your shepherd is at the table. And the enemy can't get to you. You know, there's a story that I'll end with and it's a story in scripture about how that Elisha was at a certain city. The enemy was trying to get him and one night while he was sleeping, the enemy surrounded the city. And what happened was is his servant got up a little earlier than he did and went outside and when he stood on the wall of the city, he saw they were surrounded and he runs back into Elijah, or Elisha and he says, there's, there, the enemy is surrounding us, what are we gonna do? So he gets up and he walks out and he looks around and he tells his servant, fear not. And he says this, because there are more of us than there are of them. The servant's like, what are you talking about? And then Elisha says, open his eyes, Lord. And when he opened his eyes, he realized that the enemy was surrounding the city, but there were chariots of fire surrounding the enemy in the hills. And there's a song that we sing that talks about, you may look like you're surrounded, but really, here's the reality. The enemy, he'll try to lie to you and tell you you're surrounded, you're never gonna make it. You're not good enough. There's something better in another table. Everybody's against you. In reality, when you think you're surrounded, God has the enemy surrounded. God is everywhere. He's there for you. You don't have to fear. Fear not, for God is with us. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. Sometimes you're going to go through trial, challenges and trials. Sometimes you have to go through the valley of the shadow of, the, of death. 
But here's the good news. If you follow your shepherd, we learned last week that he's our shepherd, and you come to the table that he leads you to, there's blessing, there's protection, there's favor. In fact, maybe the, the table of blessing is on the other side of the valley of shadow. So if you feel like you're in the valley of the shadow of death, if you feel like you're afraid, or maybe you're sitting at the table and the enemy has got you to start looking at other things, thinking it's better, or he's got you down thinking that you're not good enough, or he's got you to believe that everyone's against you, listen, here's what you need to know. If you think everyone is against you, here's what you need to know. God is for you. And if God is for you, the Bible says, who can be against you?